The second part of section 5.1 deals with quadratics and vertex form. And actually, this is the main topic in section 5.1. There are two types of ways to write quadratic equations. One method is in vertex form. And if you look at this, it looks very similar to our absolute value function. f of x equals a parenthesis x minus h squared plus k. And if you notice, the highest power of x is squared. Therefore, we have a quadratic. This is one way that you can write quadratic equations. Uh, the other way we'll study in section 5.2. But a few notes about vertex form. Number one, it is almost exactly like the absolute value form that you learned in uh, section 2.9. The h value, and again, it's color-coded. So if you notice, h is in red. h moves the graph left or right. If it's positive, it goes left. And if it's negative, it goes to the right. The k value moves the graph up if it's positive or down if it's negative. And hk is the vertex of our parabola, just like it was for the absolute value function. And then finally, the a value. The a value does a lot in the case of quadratics. First of all, just like we've been studying all year long, if it's greater than 1, it stretches the graph. And if it's between 0 and 1, it compresses the graph. Now, when it deals with parabolas and quadratic equations, if the a value is positive, if it's greater than 0, the graph opens up. And most importantly, it has a minimum value. That's because the graph opens upward, and the bottom dot is the smallest y value for the function. So it's got a minimum. We're going to see that a lot, so try and memorize that. If the a value is smaller than 0, that means a is negative, the graph opens down, and it's got a maximum value. Because again, if it, it's upside down, then the vertex is at the highest point or the highest y value. Therefore, that would be its maximum. So that's kind of what the values a, h, and k control. Also, don't forget that the line of symmetry, just like absolute value functions, I'm going to abbreviate the line of symmetry is x equals whatever that h value is. So the line of symmetry will also play a role in these graphs, as you're going to see here in just a second. So if you need to pause the video, copy those notes down, please do. Otherwise, we'll just do some examples together. All right, here's the first one. Remember, our parent function from the last video is f of x equals x squared. That's our parent function. And if we were to graph it, I'm just going to sketch the graph. And hopefully, we've kind of got this memorized a little bit from and uh, from, from the last video. And I'll do the best I can again with the smart board. Looks something like that. All right, so letter A. How does g of x equal to 2 parentheses x plus 3 squared minus 4 transform the parent function? Well, if you notice, it is in vertex form. That's handy for us. Because right away, you can tell that the plus 3 moves the graph to the left. The minus 4 moves the graph down 4. And the 2 on the outside, the 2 will stretch the graph by a factor of 2. So that would be what you would list for how does it transform the graph. That is how it's going to affect our red graph of our parent function. Now, letter B says, let's go ahead and graph it. All right, well, the vertex, and I'm going to do this in black. The vertex is equal to negative 3, negative 4. Okay, so negative 3, negative 4. I'm going to put a dot. It's about right there is where our vertex is going to be. And I'm also going to look at the a value. Sorry, I'm going to re rewrite that. The a value is positive. So that means our graph will go up. 
and that means that the negative 4 is going to be a minimum or the smallest y value on our graph. The line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is whatever h is. h is negative 3, so the line of symmetry is x equals negative 3, and we all know that is a vertical line. So I'm going to draw that dotted line. That's my line of symmetry. All right, now, what other points do I have on my graph? Well, we don't know any, but we do know that the slope is equal to 2. Now, how do I use that? When you're dealing with quadratics, here's how you use it. Move 1, always move 1 to the right, then the slope is how far up or down. Now that only works for the first point. I'm going to write that in blue. Only works for the first point. That's it. So this isn't slope like absolute value. This only works for the first point. So if I go to the right one, like it says, I'm going to move from the vertex right one. Sorry, i got to try and get this as accurate as I can. I move up one, but then my slope is two. So I go over one and up two, and I put a dot right there. That is the next point on our parabola. Now, it says use the slope and the line of symmetry. Well, since this dot is exactly one off the dotted line, and the line of symmetry it goes between them, I know that this dot also has to be on my graph. So I have two dots that are perfectly symmetric. Now, the last thing, it says pick one more point. Well, Let's see, I've used an x value of negative 3, I've used the x negative 4, and I've used the x negative 2. So let's try, let's try 0. Let's try 0. So I'm going to put 0 into the equation, to the parent function. Now if I put 0 where the x is, 0 plus 3 makes 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, Minus 4 would be 14. So my next point on my grid is going to be way up here at 14. It grows really quickly. Now again, I can use my line of symmetry. And my line of symmetry, I'm going to notice that that, line, that dot right there is 3 off the line. I'm going to erase my vertex form so we don't interfere there. So there's my dot right there, and it's 3 off the line. And so now I go over here 3 off the line, which would be right at negative 6, 14. And now I have 5 points, which is what you need when you draw your parabolas. And there is the graph of my function. Your turn. Pause the video, and I want you to answer the two questions. How does g of x equal to negative 3x squared plus 3 transform our parent function? And then letter B, graph it. All right, transformation. First of all, that negative 3 will stretch by a factor of 3 and flip the graph upside down. The positive 3 is outside the parentheses. That's the k value. So move the graph up 3. OK, so let's graph it. All right, the vertex. First of all, our vertex. The h value is 0, and our k value is 3, so our vertex is at 0, 3, right there. Also, the a value is a negative, 
which means the graph is upside down. It's going to pour out the water. Our line of symmetry, and I'm going to abbreviate line of symmetry. Our line of symmetry is the line x equals the h value, which is 0. So I'll draw that in there. And now, the slope. The slope is negative 3. That means if I go to the right, oops, if I go to the right 1 from my vertex, if I go to the right 1, then I have to go down 3 to get my next point, which is going to be right there. That only works for the first point, and that's it. Now, since this is 1 off the line, then I know 1 off the line over here is another point on my graph. We always need 5 points to graph a parabola. So now all I got to do is test another point. Test one point. And so what I'm going to do is let's try x equals 2. Well, if I put 2 into the equation, negative 3 times 2 squared plus 3 is equal to what? 2, two squared is 4. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 3 makes negative 9. So I know 2, negative 9, should be on my graph. That point is 2 off my line of symmetry, so my other point is 2 on the other side. And there you go. Again, I apologize with the smart board. It's not so as accurate as I'd like it. But that basically is what your parabola would look like. If you have further graphing questions, please let me know during class. Otherwise, the last topic, real quickly, that question right here. If f of x equals x squared plus 2, what is g of x if it transforms f of x by first compressing it by a factor of a half, and then it moves it left three spots? Well, all I do is I take f of x equals x squared plus 2, and the first thing I do is put it in parentheses because it says compress it by a half. Therefore, I'm going to distribute, and I get half x squared plus 1. Step 2, move it left three spots. And remember, left is inside the parentheses. So basically, I'm going to write a half and then parentheses with the x. And since it goes left 3, that would be plus 3. And then the square on the outside plus the 1, which is our k value. And there you go. That would be g of x. And that wraps up vertex form. If you have further questions, please.